Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's show. I'm your host, Zach Drew. And I'm Andrew Bellers. I hope, uh, I hope you've had a wonderful week. Uh, well, if you're watching on CT and it's Monday, so I hope you'll have a wonderful week. You know, it's, uh, it's November. It's it officially November, and we are in, uh, I don't know what your, what's your favorite season? I don't, my favorite season is fall. Come on now. That's <laughs> my favorite season. I love fall, and we are here in central Illinois, so the leaves are changing, and uh, the weather is crisp. It is sweater weather. You know, I'm not a pumpkin spice latte guy, but if you're a girl, you're probably a pumpkin spice latte girl in this area, at least. You I'm, know, a, I'm a pumpkin spice latte guy. Well, your but... wife works at Starbucks, so you, you, may, you know. You, <laughs> you can afford it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> well, she probably makes it really good, you know. But it's, it. you know, the leaves are changing. It's, it's red leaves out my front yard, yellow. Mm -hmm. It just, I love this time of year. And uh, what this means, though, is that Thanksgiving is coming. Love Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Christmas is coming. You know, my favorite holiday, probably many of our favorite holidays. And it's just, you know, you always, I always feel like when magic, you know, magic's in the air as soon as, you know, the, the, the leaves start changing. It's that time of year again. But what that also means for us is it means it's time to fundraise uh, in, in a major way. Um, you know, we have two months left of the year. We are in November and we have to, we have to fundraise a lot for the next year of 2022. So it is our season for fundraising. And so there'll be a part of every show where we are trying to meet our goals for TV airtime uh, in the year of 2022. So I just wanna say as you, you know, give you know, your year end gifts, just pray about giving to our needs uh, and consider becoming even a monthly partner towards them or, or, or truly praying and deciding upon an amount and, and giving generously to this cause. Our goal is to raise $100,000. And once again, I'm sitting here, it seems impossible. I know the Lord is sovereign with whatever he chooses to do. He went beyond all expectations uh, last year and we raised the full $100,000, which was unbelievable to go towards all of our needs of TV airtime. And that is what we're doing right now. And I'm praying that every single human being that's watching right now would get involved in, in a great way. Uh, you know, like I said, it, it's, it's the year end giving. Just think about that. And, and you don't have to give this week, but please give as soon as you can and before the year is out. Our needs and our wants, okay? And we're believing God for it all. But our needs is just over $54,000 to simply just continue with what we're doing on CTN and through the PTL Television Network. And remember, PTL Television Network through Comcast Cable reaches nine million homes, and CTN through DirecTV and Dish Network is in 45 million homes every single week with this show. And for us to simply continue that, we have to raise just over $54,000. So that is our basic need. But we are believing God for $100,000 to greatly expand our footprint in the TV network uh, arena, that we will be able to go on in an entire uh, uh, network in addition to CTN as well. And we're believing God for that, that now is the time to just continue to grow, grow, grow. If you do believe in what God is doing here, please consider giving. And I have, there's a really special word from a friend of ours right after this, and then we're gonna get into some great, some content that you have to hear. But uh, if you want to give, please do so. You can write uh, through the mail at The Zach Drew Show and IGBY, that's our covering. It stands for I Go Before You. That's what we decided to call it. You can write it uh, to IGBY at P.O. Box 797, Decatur, Illinois, 625 Two, five. Or you can go to the Zach Drew or, or go to www.zachdrewshow.com. Click the bright orange donate button and you can donate there through PayPal or Tithely. Everybody needs to get involved. They say that it takes about six months for people to watch a, a Christian program before they get involved. Mm -hmm. We're now we're getting close to the one year mark. We've seen people get involved, but we need everybody to get on. Please do something uh, today. Our great friend and my great friend, Philip Cameron, uh, Cameron, many of you know him. He has an amazing ministry called Orphan's Hands, where they literally rescue orphans from being trafficked in, in Eastern Europe and, and, and through the Moldova uh, area. 
they rescue orphans from before they are being trafficked. Where it, whenever they are trafficked, they are literally, to say it gently, serviced, which is such a horrible way to even say it, 30 to 50 times a day until they die. And it's an amazing ministry. I have such a great deal of respect uh, for him. And uh, he knows what we're doing right now. And he really believes deeply in, in what we're doing. So please listen to this word from, from our friend, Philip Cameron. And while you listen, please consider donating during our time of, uh, uh, for our time for raising money for our TV air time of 2022. Hello, my name is Philip Cameron of The Orphan's Hands. Many years ago, I met a young man on a television program uh, that, that blew my mind, to be quite frank with you. On the panel, Zach Drew began to speak prophetically as to what was taking place in the world. And out of that first meeting, a friendship has developed and a deepening respect for the vision that this young man has for the world we live in. God appoints people in certain places in our lives some are comfort, some are pastors who love us and guide us, some are teachers. But once in a while, God puts someone on the wall to look over the wall into our future, to take snippets of information from the far-flung corners of the earth and tie them together into information that will help us be aware as we see that day approaching. Jesus told us to look at the seasons, the times. And what Zach Drew does on the Zach Drew show is exactly that. I've never met anyone in my life that does more thorough research into what's taking place. I never have him on our program. I never meet him. I never hear him speak without him bringing something fresh and pertinent into my life to empower me to live better for the Lord Jesus. And that is the ultimate goal of all of our lives, or it should be. Zach Drew tithes from his ministry into our outreach to orphans. Our ministry cares for young ladies and young men that are in an orphanage system in an Eastern European country who are suspect and subject, rather, to trafficking and they use these kids 30 to 50 times a day until they kill them. And Zach Drew, from the very beginning of his ministry, decided to put missions in the center and the heartbeat and his giving outreach to those in need. I want you to pray about a very special gift at the end of the year. I know that his ministry right now has a pressing need. And they're believing God for $100,000. Let me tell you something. I know many organizations have newsletters. Many men and women have newsletters that you subscribe to. And by subscribing to them, they give you information. Well, I know that if you were to help Zach and the ministry that God has given him with a special year-end gift, that you would be subscribing to Prophecy that you would be subscribing to the blessing of God in your life because God's looking for men like Zach that will look over the wall and see the future, see the way this country is going and the world is going and tell us by bringing in the assimilation of all this information to make our lives more clear as we see that day approaching. I want to pray for you today that God would challenge you. I know there are folk watching and love Zach and his ministry. And you say, well, I, I, I would love to give a thousand dollar gift of a hundred people or to give a thousand dollars right now. This need will be met. You say, well, I can't give that kind of money. Well, let me, let me challenge you today. Why don't you ask the Lord about becoming a monthly sponsor of IGBY? I go before your ministries. Your gift, monthly gift, will undergird and sustain him as he reaches beyond where he's at right now. Let me explain. Beyond television is very expensive. It's a very expensive way to preach the gospel. But it's the best way because you're reaching more people and you never know who you're talking to. 
And I'm going to challenge you today, if you could please pray about giving $50 a month or $100 a month. He is on Comcast, which reaches 9 million homes through the PTL network. He's also on CTN to 45 million homes. And that costs thousands of dollars, I know, because we're also on those networks. And I want to pray that God would use you today to encourage this great young man to say to him, Zach, we believe in what you're doing. We see the world through the prism that you are helping us understand as these days approach. The Bible says in the last days, horrendous things will take place. Men's hearts will fail them for fear. There'll be wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes in diverse places. I don't have the time to spend hours and hours researching. So I have a friend called Zach Drew that does exactly that. And he never fails, never fails to make me lift my eyebrows and go, wow, I didn't know that. So listen, I want you to pray. And I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I'm looking at someone that has the means to bless Zach and to bless IGBY and to reach their hand around the world with the kingdom and the gospel through the mission work of the orphan's hands. I pray that you will speak to every person watching to become part of this ministry, a one-time gift of any amount, a monthly gift which will be the life's blood in the heartbeat of this ministry. And as they do, I pray that you will bless them and bring it back into their lives, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. We need Zach Drew's ministry. We need IGBY ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me give you the address. It's very simple. P.O. Box 797, Decatur, Illinois. 797, Decatur, Illinois. 62525. 62525. That's really easy. That's an easy zip code to remember. P.O. Box 697, Decatur, Illinois. 62525. Or you can go online to the Zach Drew Show. Z-A-C-H-D-R-E-W show.com. And I want you to give the very best gift you have to help this amazing young man reach beyond where he is to other people that need to hear the revelation of where we stand in these end times. God knows what you do. God keeps the books. And I'm excited to see this miracle of $100,000 that Zach needs taken care of in the name of Jesus. Blessings. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Thank you, Philip Cameron, for just your ministry, who you are, the kind things that you've had to say. And and uh, I just really appreciate that man. Um, yeah. Listen, it, as we go through this entire show, just remember that our need is over 54000 and we're believing God for $100,000 to expand our TV footprint in the year of 2022, which is just a month or two away. Yeah. I have quite the show uh, planned for today. You can think sci-fi, you know, these, these, these futuristic thoughts, and some of it might sound incredibly wild to you, very difficult for you to even comprehend what is coming because it just seems so far-fetched. Yeah, but as we know, science fiction often becomes science fact. That's right. And so this show's gonna deal with technology and what, um, and what's to come and what Facebook just did and how it sets the course for other things that I believe are coming. Mm -hmm. I believe that the human race will in large part exist in the internet. What a weird things to say. <laughs> and I understand. And I honestly believe, Andrew, that if the Lord tarries, that 20 years from now, this video, what I'm just saying right now about the future of technology, will be being replayed with wherever we're doing TV. And we'll say, look, it's here. Mm -hmm. It sounds so far-fetched, so beyond. We're going to live in the internet. Well, you'll still have a physical body, but you will live in the internet. And that's just phase one. And Facebook is building it right now. And phase two would, for, would be for us to literally be connected to the internet through 
uh, hardware, our bodies being connected to the internet. And this is all, this all coincides with the book of Revelation. I absolutely believe that for every tribe, nation, and tongue to be controlled by the Antichrist. In the end times, the human race has to be connected in such a way like never before. And in this new age of, we're gonna enter into this age of what is really referred to as complete connectivity, where everything is connected, data is being collected in real time and being sent, that those who control it will essentially know when a sparrow falls from the ground. They'll yeah. essentially know the, the number of hairs on your head. They will be given God-like powers. And that is exactly what Satan has wanted from the beginning, to be like God. Technology, 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 technology. Listen to what I'm saying. I cannot overemphasize enough the role that technology plays in the end times. I really believe that the Lord has given me special insight into this over these years. I was warning what Facebook is doing right now, and I'm gonna get to it, but I'll just give you a little teaser. They are building a fully immersive virtual world for people to essentially live in throughout their day, mm -hmm. okay? I was warning back in 2017, I, maybe I was warning before that, but I actually went back and listened to a talk that I did in 2017 warning that they were gonna be doing this very same thing, and now Facebook announced that this is what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I cannot stress to you enough how much technology is going to play into, the, into this new world. Let's go ahead and just back up, and let's just begin reading a couple of articles, okay? Here are Mark Zuckerberg's ambitious plans for building out the metaverse. And the metaverse is a fully virtual, fully immersive experiential universe, okay? Meta, the new named parent company of Facebook, Instagram, What's up? And Oculus has unveiled its plans for the next stage of the internet. Okay? So think about this. Facebook is literally rebranding itself. Yeah. Where it's no longer just about Facebook. Facebook was, you know, the owner, the operator, you know, it's the, you know, the main the main featured show for Mark Zuckerberg was Facebook. Now Facebook is being uh is being lessened mm -hmm. and Meta will now be the parent company over Instagram, over Facebook, over WhatsApp, and over Oculus. Yeah. They are totally rebranding themselves right now. And he's not saying just that this is the next stage for our company. Like that article just said, the claim that he's making is this is the next stage for how we view not just, not just the internet, but our lives as a whole. That's right. Yes. CEO Mark Zuckerberg said during his keynote presentation at Facebook's Connect conference that the company now considers itself to be, to be metaverse first and detailed its ambitious plans for building out the metaverse, a social 3D virtual space where people from around the world can connect. It's referred to as Internet 3.0. Yeah. Okay, where now we are not only just connected through the internet, like like things like Facebook, where we can interact. Where the when internet one point was, was uh, there was no exchange between the computer and ourselves. You know, it was very limited. We could plug things into the computer, but the computer could never respond back to us, mm -hmm. right? Well, then Web 2.0 was totally different. It's whenever we would be talking to computers and the computers can be talking back. That's the age that we're in right now. That's how we can connect through all the social media platforms. Web 3.0 is whenever we're gonna be able to connect with people like we are now, but we're all going to be not looking at a physical screen. We are going to be within the internet. Now, yeah. <clears throat> it's very difficult to to project how it's going to come about. Mark Zuckerberg said it's gonna come about in the next five to 10 years. They are putting $10 billion into creating this fake universe right now mm -hmm. called the metaverse. $10 billion, that's no small number. Yeah. And and Mark, like I said, for, for such an established company like Facebook to rebrand itself, People listen to how big this is. This is the largest social networking company in all of the world. And they're rebranding themselves and saying, we're no longer gonna be known just as Facebook. That's gonna be something that we do. We're gonna be known as Meta. 
because we are creating the metaverse. And metaverse is literally just the, a term that was that was actually coined in a, in a book, uh, you know, not too far, you know, it was, I think, when was the book written? Was it, but it was actually a futuristic book that coined the phrase met metaverse. Oh, I don't and know. And that was the digital world, and that's where they're coming up with this name, which as you probably know, and I've read it, that meta in Hebrew actually means dead. That's right. I don't know if there's any correlation there, but it's pretty interesting. It is. And so Metaverse is, is they're, they're, this company, such a powerful company, rebranding itself. I mean, this really ought to make you pause and think, what in the world is going on? And to put $10 billion behind it initially. And do you know how many people are hired and being hired by Meta to create this? 10,000 people. And here, oh, here's the article, Facebook plans to hire 10,000 people in Europe to build a virtual reality-based metaverse. Unbelievable. The metaverse essentially is a massive virtual world that can be accessed in real time by millions of people using avatars who can use it to hold virtual meetings or buy virtual land and clothing or other digital assets, often paying with cryptocurrency. <clears throat> this is huge. I cannot overstate it. Please listen to this show. I'm going to continue explaining this, and I'm gonna be giving you an examples of, of what the metaverse will hold. I've been saying that this is gonna be coming for, for years, and it really is just the first step. Mm -hmm. Kids, and, and you know, these days we, we are so consumed with technology already, looking at our phones 50 times a day, you know, we could play video games for 10 hours straight and just not care. Like, yeah. if that sounds weird to you, it's, and video games today are not like the arcade games that you think about. You know, if, I don't know what generation that you're watching from, but it's not like, the games say you, you can't just play pause, you can't just put pause on it. You can Mario, right? Mm -hmm. Just, you beat the level and it's done. You beat the level and it's done. No. Games today, are they are already, um, virtual worlds mm -hmm. within themselves where the game, many games say they don't end. They never end. They can just con continue going on forever and ever. You know, even a lot of these online games, you know, I know people that have spent over six months of their lives, six months of registered time of their lives playing one single video game and these video games never end. It's not a. It's not like the old video games. Yeah. And, and it's all setting the stage and, and understand that Millions and millions of people are in the gaming world just like that. Yeah, and some people will tune in, like like Fortnite, for example. People will tune in not just to play the the game, how it was, you know, built to function, but people like Ariana Grande and like huge artists will have basically avatar versions of themselves in Fortnite performing a concert that people will tune in just to experience in the virtual world. That's right. That's already happening. That's right. And so I'm going to be talking about a book, okay? It's called Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. And it is the blueprint of what Facebook is trying to do. I'm not gonna, ha I, don't, I don't want to just keep going through many articles. I wanna talk to you about this book, but Facebook has made uh, they're not hiding it. They, they actually, whenever they were creating their Oculus virtual reality headsets, every single human being that worked at the company, as soon as they started working there, they were handed this book hmm. called Ready Player One so they could read it and study it hmm. so they could build the virtual reality based off of this book. So, I want to talk about Ready Player One just for a second because it truly is the blueprint to replace real life with virtual reality. So <clears throat> in the book, uh, the year is, is 2045. It's a very bleak place with ongoing crisis taking place around the world. You know, they talked about in the book, you know, catastrophic climate change, of course, but, but widespread famine and poverty and disease, you know, a half a dozen wars, major new killer viruses, all taking place in this dystopic new future. Major cities were just vanishing in mushroom clouds. So basically what took place in the book was that people in the world turn to a fully immersive universe. 
that was accessible only through virtual reality, okay? Now, so like, like I said, the world was awful and, and truly it became a, a time where people felt like the only place of escape was the virtual world, that the world was so bleak, so dull, that they wanted to escape. And they went to this fully immersive virtual universe that they called the Oasis, okay? Facebook is calling it the metaverse. Ready Player One called that universe the Oasis. So in the book Ready Player One, you would access the Oasis through an immersive rig. And, and, and there's a picture there of, of what that looked like in, um, they actually made a movie about this book. And so that was what the rig looked like. The movie wasn't very good, all right? But the book is absolutely amazing. If you haven't read Ready Player One, do it. It is not a Christian book, but it really does paint a blueprint of where I believe that we're heading. And so they would enter into this virtual reality through this immersive rig. And this thing was so advanced. And, and, like, and I wanna pause right now that if we, we cannot project the future, how would you have described an iPhone in 1920, yeah. l l you know, let's just say in the year 1500, how would you have described a, a, an iPhone? A, it, a, it was like a magic black box that they would put to their head and they would hear voices from around the world, real voices, not witchcraft. They would actually hear the voices, yeah. right? They would, they would look into the shiny material, the shiny glass, and, and, and your grandma might appear and you would talk to her, but they would not summon them from the dead. That was your grandma. Impossible, it's witchcraft, it's definitely <laughs> true. You can't yeah. describe these things. So whenever, whenever they say you're gonna be you know, experiencing this world through vir a virtual reality headset, or in the book, a, an immersive rig, I believe even by the time that they finish building the metaverse, mm -hmm. that the tech well, well, no one's going to want to sit around and, and just put on a headset all day long. Right. It, uh, headsets, virtual reality headsets have not saturated the market. I mean, sure, a few million people will buy the latest say, set of the Oculus, you know, headsets, but not everybody has them. Like everybody has an iPhone in their hands. Right. But, uh, but I also want to make another point that with science fiction, there is a rich history of science fiction predicting things that would come into the world. Like, I won't go on and on about this, but uh, Fahrenheit 451, they predicted Bluetooth headphone technology. They predicted um, big screen, uh, flat screen TVs in the home. They predicted ATM, automatic, you know, tellers. And was this book written? And this was written in 1953. And yeah, sure, the way that they were described is a little weird. You but, know, Bluetooth headphones. So like headphones. they were describing the, the new technology in a weird way because they didn't know how to describe it, exactly. right? Exactly. Like with Bluetooth headphones, it said, you will put a shell in your ear and it will, you know, you'll be able to hear the sounds of the ocean. You'll be able to hear, you know, you'll, you'll be able to hear music. You'll be able to hear, you know, you know, people talking, radio broadcasts and stuff. So, but it predicted all of these things, and in the, in the same way I believe that Fahrenheit 451 predicted the world that we're living in now, I think this book is predicting the world that we're stepping into.